Hello, hello, and welcome to Inklings with Irina, the weekly energy show connecting you to your intuitive guidance system. And today I'm coming to you lovely, lovely day outside. I couldn't resist bringing the good weather to you because I want to talk about living a high vibe life. And why would we even want to do that? If we haven't met yet, my name is Irina Miller. I'm an intuitive energy guide and what I call an energy alchemist. I help intuitive, empathic visionaries connect to their gut instinct and translate them into profitable actions. This is something I love to do to make the invisible world visible. And I have a long background in yoga and energy work that I bring together to create very unique energy recipes. And that's the recipes I wanna to bring to you today. So let's talk about a high vibe life. Why would we even want this? Well, I was having this conversation with a friend of mine and we were talking about, you know, getting to bed at a decent time so we could wake up at a decent time, but just how at the end of the day, it really feels like, oh, you know, you don't have that many hours left by the time you make dinner and then clean everything up. Next thing you know, it's time for bed. Maybe you can squeeze in one little relaxing thing and then everything starts all over again and it becomes this automatic drone. And then you start to lose energy. It's not really a high vibe experience because what are, what's to look forward to when you wake up? <laughs> it's like, oh, here we go again, just like Groundhog's Day. So that's what I love about this world of energy is that there is a sense of awe that can be injected into every day as we connect to the sacred. And that in and of itself, no matter how tiny, like getting outside for a lunch break and enjoying beautiful weather, the birds singing, that can make all the difference to leading a higher vibe life where there's magic to be experienced and seen. There's something in the air, it feels electric. There's an excitement to waking up because even though we might still be doing the same tasks there's a mystery that's going on we realize that there's a whole world right beneath the visible that we can connect to so to live a high vibe life I put together this very special energy recipe that I love to share with my clients and, and want to share with you and it's what I call sit <laughs> it's kind of like let's just take a moment to sit so today I'm sitting in the park with you and this acronym, the first part of it, the S, what it stands for is to scan. When you're looking to live a high vibe life, it's important that you scan your energetic field. And I have a wonderful little energy exercise that I love to do for this. It's called Root Flush Fill. If you don't have it yet, then drop a little heart emoji in the comments below and I'll make sure it finds its way to you. But the Root Flush Fill is just an energy exercise for you to be aware of where your energy ends and where other people's begins. Because our energetic fields are engaging, and rubbing up against and melding with other people all throughout the day, even long distance over, you know, um, digital experiences like this. And we take on other people's energies, ideas, emotions, just like cold germs. And it's hard to know or recognize like, wow, you know what? This, this isn't mine. And the root flush fill is a great way to help you with a scan and say, oh, I'm carrying around my friend's anger or sadness. That's not mine. I don't have to give it back to her, but I have a safe way to process it and release it. So it can be recycled into something of even higher vibration, let's say, or of healing benefit to the world. You know, you might realize and notice that there's a worry or a fear that's popped up and it's haunting you throughout the day and it's flavoring and affecting everything you do. And on that energetic scan, you realize, oh wow, you know, this is from the past. This is an opportunity for me to let go and heal this fear. I don't have to let it hold me back from going after my dream today. So that scan, what it does is it just gives you a moment to check in with your energy field, the health, the state of it. Notice if there are any rips or tears or holes in your auric field anybody attaching or courting to you and draining the lifeblood out of you. <laughs> you know those energy vampires? We all seem to run into a few in our lifetime. Hopefully it's just a few, <laughs> not more than that. Um, but it's good to do a scan. The next part of this, the I, is to identify. Identify the energetic cost. Everything we do comes at an energetic cost. So maybe you do cost evaluations when you're budgeting. You're like, okay, well, if I decide to, you know, buy this air fryer, what's the return on my investment? You know, is it gonna be um, wonderful health and, um, you know, renewed vigor and vim and, 
you know, if I decide to go on this vacation, you know, here rather than there, what's the return on my investment? Maybe you hear of like things like opportunity cost. Well, what's the opportunity cost of switching tasks? Because maybe it takes a moment, you know, an hour or two to switch gears and really get focused. So we hear about all these kinds of costs and I want to specifically highlight energetic cost. And what I mean by that is Think about those moments in time when you have conversations with friends. Are there friends that after a conversation or colleagues, you're just drained? You're like, oh my God, I feel like I ran a marathon. My heart's exhausted. It feels like the life has just been sucked right out of me. <laughs> or maybe there are people that you're inspired by and after being around them, you feel energized. You're ready to take on the world. Take note of that because that's an energetic cost. Maybe it's an um, an event or an action. Let's say you volunteer for an organization and it really lights you up. You love, I have a client who um, makes lasagnas and she absolutely loves it. And it's called Lasagna Love and she puts all of her heart and energy and love into making those lasagnas to give to people who need a nice, beautiful, warm, hot meal for whatever reason. And it lights her up, it brings her so much joy, so that feeds her spirit. That energetic cost is a wonderful, wonderful energy. Um, boost and way to live a high vibe life. Maybe for someone else though, who's not into cooking, that energetic cost would be like, oh my gosh, y you know what? Like cooking, oh, that just drains me. How can I just donate? <laughs> can I donate money? <laughs> can I organize? I'd rather organize than cook. You know, so you start to run through the energetic cost and the way you know how much it costs you is you check in with how you feel. It's great to check in physically because physicalities we can notice pretty quickly. Just feeling drained or tired or fatigued or feeling, um, you know, just uh, how do I want to say, kind of sluggish. The other thing that you can take note of are the thoughts that pop into your head. You know, after you're with someone, do you start to question yourself or doubt? Um, what are you thinking about? Are you thinking positively and optimistically? These are just some little guidelines and guideposts to go by. I have a lot more, but I don't want to overwhelm. So the final part of this little acronym is T, to take action. So you've taken a moment to scan your field, figure out, okay, do I have any leaks, tears, drains, or people according to me connecting and draining my energy. You identify the energetic cost of what you're doing. And then the final thing is you take action. So now you've got the data. Now you know, okay, well, oh, I feel like, and this is all with the land of imagination that we play with initially. You just are playing with imagination and over time you have enough signs of confirmation that you realize, wow, there's, there's something to this imagining. And it really, it's really, I did have a tear in my field. That person was connected to me. And there's no, you don't have to worry about right or wrong. Be playful with it. And a lot will open up as you take the pressure off yourself to try to get it just right or perfect. Be playful. So taking action means, okay, now I know, all right, I've got a little tear in my field. I feel like someone's draining me. I feel like being involved with this particular job or action is really draining me. What can I do? to shift and kind of shore up my energy, strengthen my field? Well, there's a lot of things. Um, one is getting outside. Um, energy exercises like the root flush fill, which just drop a heart emoji in the comments below if you'd like a copy of that if you don't have it, to strengthen your energetic field. And things like noticing the rhythms of nature and aligning with those cycles, which is what I love to do in my membership in sight of the moon, where we take note of the cycles of the moon each day, noticing that when the sun, or when rather the moon is in Cancer, we might be taking things a little close to our heart, a little personally, and we may want to nest and just create a safe space to be and feel safe. When the moon is in Virgo, maybe you begin to notice like, oh, I want to organize, I want to clean, I want, I need things in order. <laughs> I need a system. Or maybe when it's in Libra, you're drawn to connecting with friends and um, really just reaching out and having that interaction time, that social time. And you just take note, the patterns are different for each person, but the there's a similarity, a thread of similarity that runs through them all. And it's great to share those experiences, which is what we do in that Inside of the Moon community. And nice to have su supportive daily practices that can teach you how to connect daily to the sacred. So you bring that awe and excitement into the day. 
So if you are interested in learning more about my Inside of the Moon membership, then click the link above. Um, we have something really special going on right now that I want to share with you. And I'd love to have you join in the fun. So hello, hello, Amy. I'm so glad to have you join in with me live. Amy's in the group and in Inside of the Moon. So. It's fabulous to have you drop by here. I hope you all have an amazing day and that you have sunshine wherever you are and birds singing. All right, I'll catch you all on the flip side. Bye guys, lots of love.